coastline is actually uh, one of the treasures that we have here in Hawke's Bay that people enjoy spending time but also a lot of people actually live on. It's, it's a well populated uh, coastline. There's a lot of investment made by people in houses and, and batches but also we've got uh, schools, um, we've got kindergartens, we've got sports facilities, uh, we've got an airport, railways. It's undeniably a treasure but one which is facing an increasing threat. Thousands of people live on the coast in Hawke's Bay, but the climate change and the resulting rise in sea levels is putting their homes at risk. There has been already uh, impact to sea level. Uh, in my lifetime, the sea has risen about 15 centimetres and we have seen erosion and impact to our coast all around New Zealand. Uh, that will only get worse and the rate of sea level rise will increase. Along the region's 353 kilometres coastline, the impact of erosion and the inundation are increasing, as well as the frequency and the severity of storms. It's predicted that over the next century, sea levels may rise by more than a metre. Here in West Shore, we have erosion that's occurring at the moment. Every year, we spend up to about $400,000 renourishing the beach. If we weren't doing that, the beach would be getting progressively smaller. For West Shore, the first tranche is to continue this work along with the placement of, uh, of suitable dredgings from the port to help facilitate the beach here. In other places where there's actually a lot of infrastructure already being built that we actually need to protect. And so we actually will go with hard engineering and trying to stop erosion, but also uh, stop um, sea level rise to the point that are actually will inundate properties. To deal with complex coast boundary hazards, the Clifton to Tanwoyo Coastal Hazards Strategy 2120 was established eight years ago. Three councils are working together with local EV and the communities to plan for and respond to these coastal hazards. Priority for us more or less will be to actually inform the community whether they actually will support us in what we're actually uh, proposing in the draft strategy and hopefully get that draft strategy endorsed so that we actually can start doing the work. Hawke's Bay Regional Council will be leading the strategy and as a result we need to do further engagement with the public around delivering a new activity for Hawke's Bay and precisely how much that will cost and who will bear those costs in terms of ratepayers and benefits. So there's a huge amount of work to go but we do have an enduring strategy for the next 100 years for how Hawke's Bay can respond to climate change and sea level rise. A public drop-in session about this strategy was held at the West Shore Surf Life Saving Club. So look, it's fantastic. We've had a, a really good turnout, a lot of good questions, and they're really quite wide ranging. Obviously, some people want us to start engineering works now uh, to protect the coast. Uh, other people prefer it stay in a more natural state. Others are concerned about offshore effects and Mahinga Kai and impacts uh, to the environment. So we need to work through all of those issues. So quite rightly, there is a high threshold before we undertake any of that work. We may actually have to seek support from the community that they actually support what we're intending to plan. If we don't get that support, then it will become very difficult for us to move at speed. But if we know that our community is behind us, we're actually able to make these changes happen sooner and quicker. While some locals are vocal about their concerns, some think the draft strategy is exaggerated. And the regional council shouldn't be frightening people with a report to say that in a hundred years' time they'll all have to retreat. Provided they re-nourish and do some other work, they won't have to. As long as they keep nourishing at West Shore, this part of the coastline is safe for a hundred years. And that protects over a billion dollars worth of property and infrastructure and it's a very low cost and it works. It has for the last 36 years. According to the draft strategy, managed will plan to retreat in some areas is likely to be an eventual outcome in the long term, depending on how far and how fast the sea levels rise. I don't think we need to panic about it, um, but there are a certain amount of time is required to make this investment into a coastline. And to be honest, I believe as the chair of, of this particular joint committee that actually there are solutions here for us that actually are cheaper and I think more appropriate for the community rather than actually a, a managed or a planned retreat, which is actually very costly. And not just costly financially, 
but also socially, where people have lived in houses or live in communities all their lives. Their children uh, have grown up there and maybe uh, still living there, there now. But they actually have to leave those communities now no longer may exist in future. It's actually socially, I don't think, acceptable. The next major public consultation is Lex Wargers. There will be a detailed proposal about what the strategy is, how much it will cost, who will fund it, and the timing for its execution. The community will have a, an opportunity to comment in depth and our councillors will consider that, uh, that feedback. Some adjustments might be made to the strategy as a result of that. Then we head into our long-term plan. Uh, which goes live on the 1st of July 2024. So there's two things that need to happen in 2023, is that the Joint Committee actually will pass over their responsibility to the Hawkesbury Regional Council, but also at the same time that this, uh, this uh, draft strategy will be endorsed and become a full-fledged strategy Hawkesbury Regional Council can start implementing. Jay Pang, local Focus.